Justin shook his head dejectedly. He put up this facade so that he could provide for his family without them raising questions, but his mother was intent on saving it. Mom, relax. After they deduct taxes, the money will be barely enough to buy the kind of house I want and renovate it. Instead of thinking about that, we should make good use of this money to make more money. Justin felt that he should give his parents some guidance. Linda was puzzled and said, Fine, then let's put it in the bank for a good interest rate. Justin smiled and shook his head, saying, Mom, if I use this money to do business, it will likely become $8 million a year, or even more. That is something a bank can't compare to. It's difficult to do business now. What if we lose money? Linda was worried. Mom, do you think my brother's degree is a waste? I don't think it's a problem at all. Maybe in the next five years our family will become a wealthy family. Then I will be the daughter of a rich family. Nora giggled and went to Linda's side and helped Justin persuade Linda. I think my brother's idea is good, Joel added. Andrew, what do you think? Linda asked Andrew. Let him do it, Andrew agreed. However, when doing business, we need time. We can only invest when there is a good project. We cannot go in blind. You have to go slow. Before that, you have to go to work. Linda nodded, adding, That's right. If Andrew hadn't said it, I would have forgotten. Justin, your dad and I asked someone to find you a job. Next Monday, you can directly report to the Human Resources Department of DM Group of Industries. DM Group? Justin was surprised. His parents did not have any connections either. How did they find him a job? It was one of the top companies in New York. Linda was talking about reporting to HR and not just an interview. That meant that he already got the job. Why didn't he know that his family had such a contact? Mom, you and Dad are so biased. Why are you only looking for a job for him and not for Joel and me? Nora ran to Linda's side and pouted coquettishly. Even Justin was curious. Why didn't his parents find a job for them? It's a long story. It's not that I don't want to find a job for you, but the company wanted your big brother to join, Linda said. Nora hugged Justin's arm and put her head on his shoulder. Okay then, I will be relying on my big brother from now on. The night flew by and the next day Justin woke up early. Apart from him, everyone else in the family seemed excited. Nora, who liked to sleep late, was already seated at the dining table when Justin came downstairs. After breakfast, Linda took a pile of things from different rooms and placed them in front of Justin. What is this? Justin asked curiously. This is a hat, a mask, and your sister's sunglasses. Put these on. Justin was stunned. Why, Mom? He asked, wondering why she wanted him to wear a disguise. Why not? You're going to get the lottery prize. It's always good to avoid trouble. Listen to your mother, Linda insisted. She also told Nora and Joel to go with him for safety. Mom, ergo, and the others will go with me. It is very safe with more than ten people. Don't bother them when they are going to work, Justin said. After much discussion, Justin finally convinced Linda. He left with the lottery ticket a while later. Peach, Ergo, and the others were already waiting at the door. When he saw the dark circles under their eyes, he knew they did not sleep well last night. So, you guys want to go together to receive the award? Justin did not know whether to laugh or cry. Ergo and the others were even more excited than Justin, and had exaggerated their appearance wearing masks and bandanas to disguise themselves, and held watermelon knives in their hands, ready for an attack if they encountered any trouble. Brother, I even borrowed a car from a friend. Ergo pointed to the small white van behind him. Justin saw how excited they were and shook his head as he chuckled. Even though Ergo and the others acted tough, they were quite soft and innocent at times, and Justin couldn't help but find it adorable. He knew that if they met someone who would help them, they would lay their lives down for them, and now Justin had become the recipient of all their devotion. Helplessly, he could only call everyone to get into the van. The poor van was stuffed full in an instant. Eleven people were crammed into the small van with little to no room to wiggle or adjust. Justin drove the van and Peach sat in the front passenger seat. They arrived within an hour. While Peach and Justin went in to accept the reward, Ergo and the others stayed outside, afraid that they would be mistaken as thieves. Because Justin didn't have any government identity cards, he declared Peach as the winner. Justin requested the department to keep their information secret, as he didn't want to give any interviews or disclose his winnings to anyone. After collecting the reward, 
Justin and Peach came out of the building and saw a patrol officer standing in front of their van arguing with Ergo. Sir, you have broken the law and parked your car here. Please show me your driver's license. There's no sign that parking is prohibited, Ergo retorted. No parking is allowed on the entire street. Whose car can you see parked around here? Please cooperate and show your driver's license, the officer said. It's my first time here. I don't know. Then I'll drive away now. After saying that, Ergo got into the car. Driver's license? How could he show it when he didn't have one? You can only leave after paying the fine. The cop stopped Ergo. Ergo sighed. I don't have any money. The car door opened and Ford jumped out of the car. He stood in front of the cop and put his hands in his pockets, then turned his pockets inside out. They were all empty. Bro, I didn't bring any money. The cop's face was serious, like he was ready to arrest them if they caused trouble. What made him even more vigilant was the knife under Ford's armpit. What was he trying to do? Before the cop could say anything, Peach interrupted. Look, officer, we're not here to cause trouble, and you can check us all. We really don't have any money on us. She turned the pockets of her pants inside out as well to show him. Following her, all the other boys got out of the van and did the same. The cop retreated fearfully, holding his breath. Look, sir, we really don't have anything. What should we do now? How do we resolve this? Ergo drawled, cocking his head to the side as if challenging him. With a curt nod from Ergo, Ford and the other boys in his crew slowly surrounded the patrol officer. The officer's forehead was covered in sweat as he watched them vigilantly. He touched his waist, only to be alarmed that he had left his gun in the car. He knew there was no other way he could intimidate them. What would he do now? And what were these guys up to? He wondered. Did he accidentally run into a gang of criminals? The patrol officer exhaled heavily and resigned. Fine, I'll let you off with a warning. Leave from here, he said, trying to sound firm. Thanks, officer. Ergo chuckled and watched as the cop returned to his car. Ergo was filled with a sudden happiness after bullying the cop and laughed aloud. But a smack on the head shut him up. Hey, why'd you do that? He yelled and turned to Justin, who had smacked him. Because, you idiot! Why would you try to act so smart in front of a cop? Why didn't you just show him your license? Justin questioned. Ergo shrugged. Because I didn't bring it. What? Justin was surprised. You got this car without a license? Ergo waved his hand dismissively. It was no trouble. It's from the junkyard anyway. Justin raised his hand to smack him again, but Peach stopped him. He did the right thing, she defended Ergo. And you were the one driving, right? Why didn't you show him your license? She asked. Justin lowered his head. Because I don't have one. What? They all asked in unison, wondering how he didn't have a license. 